Some shocking new proof has been uncovered of Jesus' existence. And you want to know what the best part is? We might finally have the actual face of Jesus on record. Some of the latest experiments that have been conducted by the scientific community on the Shroud of Turin have uncovered some curious new pieces of evidence that leave you questioning everything you once knew. But before we get into the really interesting stuff, make sure that you take a second to subscribe so we can get to 1 million in the next 6 months. Now let's get back to it. So what's the story behind this new evidence that's been unveiled around the Shroud of Turin? Well, to understand the significance of the Shroud, we have to go back several years to the time it was discovered. The Shroud of Turin gets its name because it rests in the Turin Chapel which has been passed down through the generations. The earliest records we have of the Shroud of Turin are from the 1300s when it was owned by a knight. The Shroud survived a fire and some failed repair attempts and was finally housed in Turin in the 17th century. But what makes the Shroud so special that so many people would take such a special care of this seemingly unimpressive piece of tapestry? Well, it's got to do with the fact that it's been believed to be the cloth that was used to wrap and bury the body of Jesus Christ, the main figurehead of the Christian faith. What makes this cloth so much more amazing is the fact that you can see the faint outline of a man's face imprinted on the cloth. Records of this cloth with a faint picture of a man on it have existed since the 1300s. The shroud and the existence of the image of a man on the cloth were seemingly forgotten over the years, but in 1898, Secondo Pia, a photographer, decided to photograph the shroud and when he developed the negatives of the picture, he discovered something amazing. The distinct image of a man with his arms crossed and eyes closed could be seen. The image was instantly recognizable as the face of Christ as most portraits that were presumably made of him resemble the image found in the cloth exactly. The next question you would probably ask is if the shroud is mentioned anywhere in the Bible or apocryphal text. The Bible makes no mention of such a shroud verbatim, but it does say that Christ was buried in a burial cloth supplied by Nicodemus the Pharisee and Joseph of Arimathea which could possibly be the very same cloth? It stands to reason as both Nicodemus and Joseph were members of the Sanhedrin or religious authority that governed the Jews and were both very wealthy. The cloth would pass hands and reach a French knight by the name of Geoffrey de Charny. After his death, it was passed to the House of Savoy where it remained till it was recognized as a possibly important piece of history and surrendered to the Catholic Church to be better taken care of. One of the earliest and most well put together endeavours to debunk the Shroud of Turin happened in the 70s when some of the world's best scientists got together and formed the Shroud of Turin research project. The Sturp team were aware of the fact that there were claims that the face and body of a man must be painted on and that it was a hoax but out of curiosity when they ran the cloth through some imaging technology they were shocked to find out that the impression of the man on the 14 foot long piece of cloth was not a forgery but it was indeed a real imprint. The Sturp team conducted several more tests before ending their endeavour. In the final report that they had done they distinctly noted that the shroud image is that of a real human form of a scourged crucified man but had little idea as to how it got there. Once the Sturp team's research concluded, several carbon dating methods were used to disprove the authenticity of the shroud. The shroud was examined by three labs across the world in Arizona, Switzerland and Oxford and apparently each of them had arrived at dates which would put the shroud wildly out of place than when it was postulated to exist. But here's where things get crazy. The data the three labs published was never published and all of the information that the public received was reported from other sources. It was only after a lawyer demanded that the public have access to such info that we realized how inconclusive the data was. The radiocarbon dating had failed to accommodate for the imprint, as well as there was still no explanation as to how that arrived there. It had already been concluded by the Sturb team that such an imprint was not the result of an amateur painter or a forger, 
but a very genuine imprint of a man. It's been hypothesized that for such a vivid print to be imprinted on a cloth in such a manner, a staggering 6.4 gigawatts of energy would be required. That's an incredibly high amount of energy. These have been the research efforts thus far, but due to the inconclusive nature of the research, new tests have been conducted using state-of-the-art X-ray imaging technology, and what scientists have found has astonished the world. Five scientists from Italy have banded together to conclusively lay to rest the authenticity of the shroud. They realized that, while proving how the imprint appeared would be nigh impossible, what they could do was find out the age of the cloth and be able to prove once and for all if the cloth was indeed 2000 years old or not. What they did was try and examine the structural degradation of the linen cloth using a new method called wide angle x-ray scattering and see if the date that the machine provided was consistent with the alleged time period it was from. The scientists decided that it would be a good opportunity, as well, to prove beyond a reasonable doubt the findings made by the radiocarbon dating method done since 1988. So while deciding on which part of the linen the testing should be carried out, they decided it would be good to take the sample in close proximity to where the 1988 tests were carried out, and what they found was astounding. They discovered that the piece of cloth they had sampled, when subjected to angle x-ray scattering, produced results that dated the cloth somewhere between 55 and 75 AD, which is an amazing nod to the genuineness of the cloth. What the five scientists did differently from the team that analysed the cloth in 1988 is, instead of using the half-rate decay rate of carbon-14, they studied the decomposition of cellulose, which is a primary constituent of linen from that era. In the words of the team that conducted the research, the natural aging of cellulose in the linen of the Turin Shroud allows us to conclude that it is a probable relic 20 centuries of age. But what's even more amazing is that they took the opportunity to also try and come to a conclusive stance on the imprint on the Shroud of Turin. Do you remember how we told you at the start of this video about how the Shroud of Turin was also exposed to fire? Well, they subjected the same sample of the cloth that they used for the initial tests to a thermal shock. That is, they heated it in an oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes to see what effect heat would have on the cloth. They stated that the image has to possess a certain special quality because any such imprint would definitely disappear if such a delicate fabric is exposed to heat. Any imprint present on it would disappear indefinitely. Once this study was released, everyone around the globe was shocked to learn that the face of the wounded and disfigured man on the Turin Shroud might legitimately be the face of Christ. Many people around the globe realized that it was high time a more accurate representation of the face of Christ was made and that they had the technology to do so. Artificial intelligence has developed at such an amazing pace that the technology needed to reconstruct the face is readily available. When the shroud was subjected to an AI-like mid-journey, the face that it returned was one that was eerily similar to those images of Christ that we were familiar with. It showed a man with a long hair and beard with severe trauma to the head and body, just like what Christ would have experienced when he was crucified. Many other people tried the same and got similar results, which has prompted a wave of optimism around the globe. It seems like once Christ was resurrected, those who reached his grave must have set aside the materials they buried Jesus with and realized that someday this cloth would give believers around the globe strength and prove to them that they serve a living God who rose from the grave. While there were a lot of initial worries that the shroud might be just another forgery from Europe, small bits of pollen from the Middle East that was lodged in between the fibers of the cloth once again contributed to the authenticity of the shroud. It seems that, in an amazing turn of events, the Shroud of Turin has gone from an example of a professional medieval forgery to an indispensable piece of evidence as to Christ's existence. The cloth has been venerated by the Catholic Church as one of the most important symbols of the Christian faith and one of conclusive evidence to the birth, death and resurrection of Christ. Christians around the world are rejoicing at the fact that the once long disputed piece of evidence that they hoped to be genuine has now scientifically been proven beyond a reasonable doubt that it is 
real. Those who have persevered and believed without seeing can now know that this piece of linen might be the real cloth that housed the Saviour's body before he rose from the grave and took his place as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But regardless of whether or not the cloth is real, the Bible has stated that it's not right of us to be like the Apostle Thomas, who only believed because he saw physical evidence. Christ has instructed us to believe in him even if we do not see him. Our trust to be put in God alone, and not in any physical object that deteriorates and crumbles. As Christians, we have to ask ourselves the question if our faith is rooted in God's love or God's existence, because while the latter can be shaken, former cannot. God took on the form of man and came to this planet to save us, his beloved, from an eternity of pain, suffering and separation from him. We should be thankful every day for this sacrifice on the cross at Calvary and live in a manner that's pleasing to him. The Shroud of Turin is a beautiful ode to Christians around the globe that the God that they serve is one who loved them enough to die for them and strong enough to pull them out of death and bring them to eternal life. In the words of the preacher Billy Graham, God proved his love on the cross. When Christ hung and bled and died, it was God saying to the world, I love you. If you made it all the way to this part in the video, you may qualify for our membership so you might want to listen closely. It's an exclusive area where we release videos that we cannot show to the public yet. You will get to see everything first and learn about truths that we cannot reveal anywhere else. If you want to learn more, hit the link on the left of the screen or check out the link in the pinned comment.